Hello and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time we kept going with the main story, got the... What is it? Uh, that Uther's Tarot, that's what it is. Went over here, touched it, saw visions of the Martyr, and now we're going back to the Martyr. I also put a few skill points in quick. Uh, rounding off... What I wanted from the Psyker training, getting the uh, HP on hit, I gotta figure out where that actually goes. Because it seems like some skills don't get it. Uh, didn't touch any of this. Got this, though. 20% bonus damage on Psyker weapon skills, which will be great, because it's, you know, free damage. I'm looking at going into heat attacks, because... Witchfire Symbiotic's 3% heat damage bonus for every equipped Pyromancy skill. If I build out all Pyromancy, I can boost damage 15% or so. And I mean, that's free damage. Then maybe... I'm contemplating physical attacks. Debuffs is definitely going to be a route to go down because of, like, transfer strain. Reducing my warp heat on killing enemies. That alone is worth a lot. Uh, damage over time doesn't have anything fancy or new compared to the assassin. Which is a little disappointing. There's under range combat, there's also this. Oh, actually no, that's not the good one. This one's a good one. Uh, 5% reduced warp heat cost for ranged psychic powers. Yeah, it's not a ton. Considering that's I'd have to be using at least 20 point, like 20 warp heat abilities to get even one point taken off for that. But it is a cost reduction, and depending on if this game rounds down or up, that may still get me a free point. I don't fully know, but it also, it also helps that some of the other abilities, you know, range damage bonus. Okay. Am I really going to pass up 12% free damage? The reload is going to be a waste for me. I'm not really going to use anything with reload on it. But crit chance... Uh, I'm not going to touch overheat because I don't overheat. haven't really looked into a single DPS. I don't think there's really anything worth noting. Yeah, it's nothing worthwhile. AoE is AoE. But let's just jump into this mission quick. Requesting immediate status update, Inquisitor. At your command. Oh yeah, the I forgot about this mission. Some guys here, some guys here. So in Warhammer news, Games Workshop finally released the new Eldar set, so you can finally get plastic Eldar. Only took them how long? Which is cool, you know, finally having non... what were they, pewter I think? Or they fine cast or something? It, it's been a while since there were new ones, so it's nice to get non, you know, wonky looking minis, but they released uh, Maugen Ra, who is the Phoenix Lord of the, I think it's Death Reapers? Yeah, I want to say it's the Death Reapers, who are like a heavy weapons kind of guy. They're an aspect warrior of the Eldar. Which actually leads into a bit of lore concerning Phoenix Lords. Because you have... If you're standard guardians who are, you know, infantry, then from there you have aspect warriors who are various things. 
these are your I'm trying to think your howling banshees your fire dragons uh, striking scorpions swooping hawks uh, I know there's more but their names confuse me every time but they're specialists what's cool and what's kind of interesting is the fact that with these teams, you have Exarchs, who are essentially the elites of the specialists, and then from there you have the Phoenix Lords, who are essentially the leaders. They're the top guys. There's only one of them at a time, to my knowledge. But they're essentially like the best of the best. Yeah, it's a little bit of some of the Eldar military and how they are structured. I don't know a ton about the Eldar, mostly because I struggle to care. It's not a like dismissive kind of care, it's just... I always felt like their lore was never fleshed out enough for me to be like, Oh, I'm really interested in these guys. And now they have, like, the Aeneid or something with a Y, I don't know how to pronounce it. But it's essentially just tied to the Eldar Death God. Which is kind of cool, but... It's kind of hard to care, especially when you... If you see all the times an Avatar of Cain shows up, especially in books and stuff, Avatars of Cain show up just to get pummeled by literally everybody. Space Marines, Chaos Demons... I'm sure the Tau have pummeled one to death a few times. For being the you know, physical embodiment, or at least a piece of the physical embodiment of the Eldar god of combat and murder. He's... they're, they're really limp. And it's a bit disappointing, because it's, it's struggle... it makes me struggle to care. You know, it's like, why should I care about these, this wimpy faction or like this faction where all their gods are wimpy or just don't show up ever. This is Lord Inquisitor Clusterheim speaking. I trust that you can hear me, but my current circumstances are not ideal for transmissions. I don't know who you are. I don't even know what you look like, so don't take this personally. But you were an Inquisitor, that much I gathered from the snippets of your Vark signal on the Inquisitorial channels. I must command you to leave the Martyr immediately. You have stumbled upon an investigation that has been sanctioned by the Caligari Conclave, and which might have a huge impact on Holy Terror. Your presence here might lead to unnecessary complications. Leave now, and may the Emperor be with you. I need to see what I can do to get health on kill, or health on hit. I know I need to boost. When I can get a final rune to put into this ability, there's one that's like 0.75% HP per second regen. I saw one ability I was really interested in. I almost want to replace this with it. It's, uh, I think, Death Augury. And it's... If you take lethal damage within the, like, two-minute window that the ability is active, you just gain 50% of your health and suppression. So you can just completely circumvent dying, and... Considering it's not a perk you have to slot in, it's essentially free. 
majority is silent. According to my analysis, you have eliminated 78.65% of the local hostile forces. The automatic defenses of your transport can easily handle the rest if needed. So you had an idea about the teleport beacons? Correct. You need to find a functioning cogitator and access the teleport beacon map of the deck. Your chances of thoroughly exploring a fortress monastery this size are minuscule. You need to be able to avoid traveling long distances on foot. Oh yeah, the Eldar also got a new codex. Which is good, I think they didn't have one yet, so... This edition is, you know, finally catching up on core factions. But it does make me wonder how long this edition is going to last, because I swear 8th edition did not last long. Oh, I had to laugh. I was watching old game reviews, you know, Total Biscuit and the like, Angry Joe and what have you, and some of the old reviews just... Like, there was one where it's for a 40k game, but it was some... I can't remember what it was called, but it was a lane defense, like plants versus zombies kind of deal. And I remember when that came out. I remember seeing it and being just floored that that was what the license was going to have produced. I feel like to a degree Games Workshop really hasn't learned from that. But at the same time at least we're not dealing with that kind of garbage as frequently now. I am hoping we get just better games in general for 40k. Fantasy's doing great. You know, you got Blood Bowl. I don't really care about it, but it seems pretty good. Mordheim was... decent. I don't know, I... I like the idea, I just can never get into Mordheim. You know, they have Total War, they have... Vermintide. Which I kind of wonder if they're going to do a third one because I don't know how much further you can really go with that before you're really, you know, tapping the keg here. Because they've already had Chaos and Beastmen show up as factions. Unless they want to really go wild and be like, Vermintide, but you're going to go to... I don't know, Lustria, and fight Vampire Coast. Or something weird. Which I'd be down for. I'm never gonna say no to more enemy variety in a game. That said... Enemy variety can be a double-edged sword. It depends on how much effort's put into them. If it's just a slapdash, hey, we reskinned, you know, red slime into blue slime kind of deal, yeah, that's a problem. That's not enemy variety, that's slight modification. And of course, it has to make sense. You can't have. Vampire Coast showing up in, like, Uber's Reich or something. But much like uh, Chaos Bane did, you know, you have a little Nehekara DLC, you have the people head there, and you throw down against Skelly Boys. Fits lore-wise, fits aesthetically, not a bad idea in general. I do wish we'd get a Souls-style Warhammer game, though. Fantasy or 40k, I don't really care. I've been playing Elden Ring way- I'm not gonna say way too much, there's no such thing. I've been playing it a lot, and 
it's I'll be honest, it's really fun. I enjoy it immensely. Of course, I always enjoy Souls games. But I'd love to see that idea set in, you know, something Warhammer. Remnant from the Ashes showed that you can do a gun-based Soul-style game. And, you know, I could see it being done with 40k. Oh wow, that was it. I didn't even have to clear the rest of this. Neat. Hey, skill point. You have the result. I have All right, let's do this other mission quick. I want you. But as I was saying before, the mission ended, and I interrupted my own train of thought. Now I have to think what I was going to say. I had everything planned out, and then I blanked again. Remnant, right. So, you could take Remnant from the ashes, since it showed, you know, shooters can function in a solo style. You mix that with your standard, you know, sword and board melee combat, which fits within 40k, and then you just go, okay, we're going to mix these, and have it, you know, you could do a couple things. You could have some static locations, you know, players travel these places, fight chaos or xenos or whatever it may be. Then, Ah, interrupted by NPCs. But you could have your story areas and then after that introduce like a random gen not not a dungeon per se, but like war zones. Where you do easiest version would be you have static terrain sets and then from there you have I would say probably a a peg and socket system of locations bases or different uh, points of interest your character or if they group up group of characters land on the planet have to fight however many bosses. More interruptions. I forgot I have that ability. Yeah, spontaneous combustion. But yeah, you have it you fight a number of bosses, however many you deem necessary realistically. And from there you you just go through. Introduce modifiers to characters so that they can keep having justification to replay 
random roll unique, sort of semi-unique gear with different prefixes and what have you. It's doable. All these things are quite doable. It would need refining for sure, but the idea can, I think, stand on its own. And honestly, expansions would be easy to, as can be. Oh yeah, laser. Man, I haven't touched this class's a bit or like this loadout's abilities at all. Yeah, I think I I'd mentioned the an idea for a Souls 40k game before. I just think it's a, honestly, an untapped bit of potential here. I guess the big question, no, it's not even really a question, it's just a concern, is how well can a developer do it? You know, FromSoft has, at this point, over a decade of experience making Souls games. You know, they pioneered them to the point where the genre is named after their games. But everybody else, some people get it, some people don't. And I feel like a lot of people don't. Inquisitor, I was thinking about our previous conversation. And I remembered something. It's more like a rumor, to be honest. But you might want to know that Klosterheim's superior, the Lord Inquisitor I mentioned, was apprehended and killed by the Grey Knights. I have no idea, but it must have been something serious to earn that kind of attention. And it would explain why his attempt turned out Yeah, I really need that cooldown or that warp heat reduction. That'll help immensely. As I say that though, like the Souls idea, it does worry me. Not out of even like whether or not someone can do it capably, but more out of trend setting. You have reached your destination. Access the terminal and initiate emergency shutdown. Because something like Elden Ring already has been seen as very a very good game by a lot of people. The only problem I've seen is it doesn't work on a lot of systems in terms of computer. Which I get. It's very big and since this is their first attempt at making a fully open world game they might not be that good at loading and unloading environments efficiently. Which that seems to be the case. So, you know, I get it. But the concern is, if the game is... If it does well enough, and this always happens, 
very soon after more people start imitating it. And we won't see those games in, you know, six months. That's going to be, as with all game development, a couple years down the line. And they're either going to end up on the cutting room floor, forgotten, and left as only a what-if. Or the other possibility is that we see just an absolute glut of Souls-like games for a very brief time. Which I fear would be the fate of a 40k game is coming out at the wrong time or just not being that good because whoever gets their hands on it doesn't fully grasp the concept. Which is always a concern. I mean, that's, that's a concern I've had for even 40k games is whether people get the core ideas behind 40k. You know, it's a dystopian setting, but it's not the same kind of dystopia as something like cyberpunk. Yeah, they're both science fiction futures, but one obviously is... They're both dark, but one obviously is kind of cartoonishly evil, being 40k. You know, it... It takes itself seriously, but you can't really take it too seriously. Tech priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a dangerous perk. And that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.